Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your simple budget spreadsheet in the most efficient way. In this video, I'm using Google Sheets, but the Excel version is exactly the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means that you are not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I will show you step by step how to prepare your spreadsheet. If by mistake you touch a cell with a formula and see this message, simply click on the X and you will be fine. Now let's have a look at the instruction tab. In this tab, you don't have to do anything. It is only to show you where you can plug your numbers and where you cannot in the My Budget tab. So all the cells frame in red are editable. Near each of the cells, you will find a mark at the top right corner of the cell. The black corner indicates that there are a note associated with this specific cell. And you only have to put your mouse on the cells to see the note. These notes are indications on what is the purpose of this specific cell or column and what kind of data you have to plug in. So now let's scroll down to see the full tab. And as you can see, everything is framed in red and well indicated. So now let's have a look at the mock data tab. This tab is exactly the same as the first one. So you do not have to do anything in this one. It is just an example of what the spreadsheet should look like after you finish entering all your data. Now let's have a look at my budget tab. The shape of this tab is exactly the same as the two previous one, but it is empty and you will have to fill it in to see your financial performance. So first you can change the name of your budget here. So in this example, we will take the month of October. Then enter your budget period with a start date and an end date. If you are in Google Sheets, as you can see, you simply have to double click on the cell and a small calendar will appear. If you are in Excel, however, you will have to type in the date. Then finally, enter your currency symbol. So in my case, I'm in dollars. As you can see on the left hand side at the top of the tab, you have your summary data of your budget. You can easily see your starting balance, total income, bills, subscriptions, expenses, savings and debts. The only data you have to enter in this table are the starting balance in the budget column, meaning the amount of money you want to allocate for your October budget. And then also your real one, meaning the amount of money you actually uh, have at the start of the month for this specific month. So now let's enter some data. So let's say I budgeted $1,500 and at the beginning of the month, I see that I have $2,000. So I entered it in the real column. So the aim of a budget is to estimate your income and expenses and make sure that you have enough money to pay all these expenses. If you have money left at the end of the month, well, good job. You can use it to pay your debts more quickly or put this extra money in your savings. The most important thing while you fill in your budget is to keep this concept in mind. Now let's fill it in together so you can see how it works. So the first thing that you want to fill in to prepare your budget is the income table. You can enter the category of income and the expected amount. So here, as an example, I will write paycheck Jessica and the expected amount is, let's say $3,000. The real column is locked, so you will not have to enter any data in it. And don't worry, I will cover this column later on in this demo video. So now let's fill in this table to show you how it works. Then you want to budget your expenses in categories. You can enter your bills, expenses, subscriptions, debts, and savings. You will have to think of categories like groceries, skin cares, etc. Again, there is a difference between a budget and your real expenses. The budget column is the amount you plan to spend for the month 
and the real column is the real amount that you spent for each spending categories during the month. Now let's enter some data in each categories. For bills, debts, and subscriptions, you can also enter a due date. So let's enter some data in the bill tab. So let's say we have internet, then we have a due date. And let's say that the budget is $50. So now let's make an example with expenses table. Let's say in the category we have groceries. And let's say our budget for the month is $300. Now let me fill this in completely to show you how it works. All right, now that we filled in all our budget data, you will have to scroll down at the bottom of the tab to fill in the transaction tracker. In this table, you have to enter the date, the amount, then use the drop-down menu to classify your expense in a category previously written in your budget. You can also add a short description to exactly know what is your spending. Now let's make an example together. Simply write the date. Let's say we spent $120 on a phone. So let's find the phone categories. Perfect. So as you can see, it's the, in the bill and then we can write a short description if you want. Now let me enter more data for tutorial purposes. Don't forget, in the transaction tracker, you also have to enter your real income. So the process is basically the same. Enter the date, the real income you received in your bank account, and the name of your income.
Once you've done this for the whole period of time you mentioned above, you will see in the green table all the categories in order from the highest to the smallest. Below, you will also know on which day of the month you spent the most money. Then, if you scroll up at the top of the tab, you will see all the graphs showing your family financial performance for this period of time. Now let's have a look at the bonus tab. So we added a bonus tab, which is a saving goals tracker. This tab will help you set money aside to reach your goals. First, you will have to define your currency symbol, just like in the previous tab. So as you can see in this tab, I already fill in a little bit of information to show you how it works. So in the funds overview, the only thing that you have to do is to list your goals. You can list up to 15 saving goals in this tab. First, give your money saving goals a name. So in our case, let's say new home. Then write the amount of money needed to reach your goal. Let's say 20,000. Then write the amount you aim to put aside each month toward that goal. Let's say $500. Now simply write the amount of money you already have aside for that specific goal. So now let's say $5,000. It could also be zero. And as you can see, the gray part of this table is auto-populated, so you do not have to write any information. So now let's fill in the contribution tracker on the left-hand side of the tab. So in this table, you have to track the amount you put aside for your goals and assign it to specific goal name. So double click on the date to pick a date from the calendar. Don't forget in Excel, you will have to type in the date. Then use the drop down menu to pick a goal and finally write the amount you just put aside. Now let's enter a few example in the contribution tracker and you will see all the data change on the right. So as you can see, as time goes by, you will see your progress increasing. You can also easily see how many months are left until you reach your goal and the date your goal should be achieved. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your spreadsheet. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Follow Priori Digital Studio on Etsy and YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.